Okay guys, welcome back, and I know it's been a while, but today we're going to be showing you guys how to flash custom firmware or CFW onto any 9-bot ES scooter or SNSC scooter, and the reason we're doing this is because A, stock firmware limits you at 15 miles per hour, custom firmware allows you to top out about 20, you can see we're kind of cruising here, and also when we did research on how to do this our first time, there's some pretty nice tutorials out there in terms of just like reference and resources, but we wanted to create something super comprehensive because it didn't really include some of the essential steps and we just want to create a nice foolproof reference to anyone who wants to do it in the future. Hacking custom firmware will allow you to get a speed improvement as well as allow you to just increase general motor power and tinker with other cool settings as well. So you can really just customize your scooter. And before doing this, we do want to mention that hacking your firmware does pose a significant risk to frying any of your electronics and we're not responsible if you end up smoking your scooter. That being said, through this video we're going to explain what is safe to change and what is not safe to change and if you follow our directions you're less likely to fry your scooter but at the same time please just don't leave trash in the comments if you fry your scooter you're doing this at your own risk and um yeah. Okay, so just one last piece of warning is before you flash your scooter, you want to make sure you have a scooter with an external battery. That means that you're using a 9-bot ES4 with a battery mounted on the handlebars or you've installed a custom external battery. We're going to show you how to do that in a future video, uh, which is coming up. But if you're not using an external battery, you're likely to fry your battery management circuit or damage your internal battery severely from overdrawing it. It's just not a great idea. So make sure you have an external battery. One thing to mention before we move on here is this video has been broken into two sections. One where we just flash stock firmware because you need to flash stock firmware before you flash hacked firmware. However, if you happen to have never ever tinkered with anything on the scooter, specifically never the dashboard, then you can skip to the end of this video and follow the steps there. If you are unsure and you have swapped your dashboard, you can try following the steps at the end of the video. Worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. Uh, if that's the case, just come back to the beginning of the video here and we'll show you how to flash your stock firmware so you can get on to flashing the hack stuff. Okay, so let's gather our parts. We're going to need some tamper-proof bits, a screwdriver for those tamper-proof bits, and some wire strippers, some hex screwdrivers, and an ST-Link V2. This is what we'll use to connect our dashboard to our PC. Some nice thin silicon wire, and of course a multimeter, and a soldering iron, and of course some solder to go with that soldering iron. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna to need to take our scooter here and unscrew the handlebar assembly from the main body of the scooter. And to do that, we're gonna use a T25 anti-tamper bit on the side. Sometimes they thread lock these bolts in here, so it can be a little bit tricky at first. That's why I recommend using a manual screwdriver, not a drill, because a drill might make it faster, but stripping these bolts is really a pain, especially since you're going to have to drill them out with a drill afterwards. It just gets involved. Let's just remove them by hand the first time, and you won't have to worry about them later. So make sure to stash those in a nice safe place. And then once that's done, you can just easily remove the handlebars by sliding it off the top. Make sure not to lose the O-ring, which is sometimes installed between the handlebars and the shaft. Then you just unplug it and set it aside. And then remove the two bolts using your hex screwdrivers underneath. And this is going to allow you to remove a plastic piece which holds your headlight in. So you can just pop that guy out with some needle nose pliers or with just with your fingers. And then remove your headlight on the front and make sure to unplug that cable and set that guy aside. And sometimes there's two more bolts underneath here screwed in. You'll be able to see them. Remove those if you have them. If not, just move on. Okay, so I'm going to take this screwdriver extension or you could use a dowel and just use this to push out the dash. So there's a hole in the bottom of the handlebar assembly and you just wanna kinda of use that to push on the little buzzer of your dashboard and push it out. During this, you wanna make sure not to push on any wires because you can sometimes chop and mangle them up. You just kinda of wanna peek in there and make sure to wiggle that dowel around so it's pushing on the buzzer of your dashboard and not the wires and then just push it out. After that, just start unplugging all the wires and those are to your throttle and brake lever. And then make sure to save this plastic piece which is installed here to prevent your dashboard from shorting out on your aluminum handlebar assembly. Now we can take our dashboard and take it over to the bench for some soldering. 
So we're gonna take our ST-Link V2 and we're actually gonna desolder these black header pins on the side. The reason for this is if you used just standard header pin extensions like people use for breadboards, sometimes the wires on those things is so crappy you can't actually solder to it. So that's the whole reason why we got that fancy silicon wire, just so we can get a nice solid connection. We don't have to worry about anything popping off or just getting frustrated. Um, this is a little bit tricky sometimes to desolder these header pins. So if you don't have much soldering skill, I would just skip this step and use the header pins. But for me, this makes it a hell of a lot easier, especially if you're flashing more than one um, dashboard. And I'm just gonna use some alcohol and clean up my solder tabs there. Okay, let's look at some wiring diagrams. So out of the ST-Link V2, you wanna wire to 3.3 volt ground, SWDIO, and CLK. And we're gonna use some of our nice silicon wire for that. And strip a teeny bit off. You don't wanna strip too much because just leaving a bunch of exposed wire just puts it at risk for shorting. I'm just taking off a few millimeters here, just enough to solder it on. And then of course I'm gonna tin that because the joints are pretty small and I just wanna be able to kinda of tack them on. So we're gonna solder our 3.3 volt on first, then our ground. then our SWDIO, and finally our CLK, our clock. After that, we're gonna plug that into a USB battery bank or just a computer and just check the voltage across 3.3 volt and ground because ST-Links also have a five volt output and we wanna make sure we wire to the 3.3 volt one so we don't fry our dashboard. So once that's done, we can move on to soldering them onto our dash. But before we do that, we actually have to look at one other thing, and that is capacitor 15. That is a BLE reset capacitor, so that prevents your Bluetooth module from resetting, um, which is essential for it to flash properly. So if you have C15 on your dashboard, um, you can kind of see it's attached kind of near the base of it. Um, you can see the uh, Bluetooth chip on the corner. It's a little pesky guy. You're gonna wanna remove that. So for this, I found that the best technique is just to use a soldering iron and create an enormous blob of solder at the end and just kind of wipe it off. Once that's off, we're going to start wiring in our ST linker to our dashboard. So you can kind of see the wiring here. So once again, we're gonna take our SWDIO pin and our CLK and our ground, and we're gonna wire those into the bottom three pins on the dash. And then the 3.3 volt pin has a little bit trickier of a spot mounting right here. It solders to the terminal of one of these capacitors over here. Um, so a little trickier to do. You wanna make sure not to desolder the capacitor while you're doing that. Then we're gonna take this assembly and plug it into our computer. and go up to the Scooter Hacking Wiki here. I have all these links you're about to see included in the description below. And click on this first link here that takes you to the Ninebot original firmware, that for your dash. And then we're gonna click on that and download the original firmware, which is going to be called um, fullble.bin. And once that's downloaded, we can go back and click on that first link there, which is going to take us to the basic outline of the tutorial we're following, this is probably the best documentation they have online. And before we move on in this video, you're going to need to install and follow all the steps here in the very beginning. None of this is very complicated or rarely brings up any issues. That's why we're just not covering it in this video. Basically, um, just download all this stuff, run through the you know respective installers, and then for your open OCD download, that's in for open on chip debugger, that's what we're gonna be using to actually connect to our dashboard. Um, you're gonna wanna download that and then just it's going to extract into a folder and you can just leave that in your uh, documents or downloads. And you can see a lot of this we're going to be doing in the command prompt. So you can see all the commands down here. And you can see that I've stored my open OCD folder in my documents. You want to remember where you stored it because we're going to actually have to select that directory and open our command prompt here. And then we're going to CD into our documents because that's where I have it stored. It could be in your downloads. Just type CD and wherever it's stored. So for example, CD documents. And then once we're in documents, we're gonna change our directory to the folder itself. So we're gonna type CD open OCD-0.10.0. So now our directory has been changed to the folder itself. And then once we're in the folder, we're gonna paste in this massive line of code here. And then hit enter. And voila, it's going to ask you for your firewall and just click allow access. 
And then you'll also see on the left, it's reading out some statistics about the board. This is where you know if you've connected properly. If you haven't, just recheck all your solder joints and check everything with a multimeter again. Hopefully you haven't fried your dashboard, but if it looks something like this, at least you should be good. Okay, so now we're gonna open up another command prompt and this is where we're going to turn on Telnet. So we're gonna go back over here and copy and paste this line of code. and press enter. And now that that's done, we're going to type in a few other things. And that is going to allow us to fully erase everything on our dashboard before we flash our firmware. This is necessary to do on a lot of the Chinese dashboards. If you don't do this, you might get an error such as um, uh, flashing aborted by target or something like that. So make sure you're doing this in this exact order. You're gonna type init, enter, reset halt, enter, and then NRF 51 mass underscore erase. And that'll, completely erase everything on our dashboard. And then we can take our downloaded firmware and drag that into our folder of OpenCD. So drag that into my documents and then into my OpenOCD folder, just anywhere in there, just chuck it in there and then type program and then the name of your firmware. So for me, it is going to be full ble.bin. And there you go, press enter, and you can see programming has started. And just give it a few seconds here to finish programming. It'll give you a finished message. Once again, if you receive any errors here, um, just go back, check your wiring, make sure you type in these commands in exactly the right order. You've desoldered C15. Um, still have any issues, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below or check out the Ninebot Scooter Hacking Wiki or the Discord. And there you go, programming's finished. So now we're done here, we can go back and exit, unplug our dash from our computer and go back to the bench and desolder everything. And make sure when removing that positive wire wired to that capacitor, you don't accidentally desolder your capacitor. That would be very annoying. And we can start popping everything back into our handlebar assembly. So you can just put in this plastic piece first and then pop our main dash wire, which goes down to our speed controller down there in and then wire in your brake and throttle levers and make sure to push that headlight wire through that main hole as well. When pushing everything together, make sure no wires are stuck in the side because you don't want to accidentally chop some wires and it should just kind of snap in there. Now we're going to plug in our headlight and when doing this, make sure your headlight faces down when you put it back in. We don't want that facing towards the sky, that would be bad. And press that in, there's kind of an O-ring you got to squeeze in there. And then we can take that final plastic piece that we removed, which holds the headlight in and push that in as well. Make sure your dash cable is running out the proper side of it, which is going to be the left. And then we can take those bolts and screw that thing back together. And now we're going to plug in our handlebar assembly into our steering shaft here. And just kind of stuff all those wires back in there before sliding it all together. And then we're going to screw in those four bolts on two on either side. If you would like, you can add some blue thread locker on this, but I personally just make them really tight. Uh, thread locker can sometimes make it really tricky to remove later if you ever need to service your scooter again. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the custom firmware generator, and this is where you're actually gonna generate your custom firmware. So to start off, just select the latest version of stable firmware. And the first thing we're gonna be talking about is KERS. And KERS is when you're actually riding your scooter um, downhill or on flat ground, when you let go of the throttle, it actually applies an ever so slight amount of electronic braking, just so when you do hit the brakes, it's not like a sudden whoomp. Um, so the KERS minimum speed is the minimum speed you have to be going for KERS to kick in. Anything below that, the wheel's just gonna free spin. I actually like to leave this on. I find that you can set this to 40 to disable it. So that basically means you can go freewheeling downhill without any electronic braking. But when you do hit the electronic brakes, it's like a really sudden kick in. So I actually highly recommend not using this. It's a little dangerous almost, if you're, especially if you're going like 20 miles an hour. So I'm not actually going to tinker with that. And the same thing with the KERS divider. 
Now, something I am going to tinker with is the maximum speed, and that's in kilometers per hour. Um, your scooter, I don't think the wheel can physically turn past 20 miles per hour because its RPMs just max out or um, custom firmware just isn't working at the moment. You can expand its tire. Um, that's a whole separate thing though, but that only buys you a few more miles per hour. So I'm just gonna set mine to something wild like 45 just so I don't have to worry about it later. And it'll, it'll just top out at about 20 though. And then I'm not going to tinker with cruise control delay or motor start speed, just no need. I feel like the stock settings on those work great. Um, there is an alternative throttle algorithm, which is supposedly more aggressive. I've tried it and it personally feels exactly same to the original, maybe a little more linear, but I feel like um, the stock throttle algorithm handles a little bit better. So I'm gonna leave that stock. And the last thing we're gonna tinker with here is called the motor power constant. And this is the thing that's gonna fry your scooter if you set it too low. So a lower value means higher power. And to give you an idea on exactly how much power it's going to give you, um, we're gonna reference this handy dandy spreadsheet over here. So this is a spreadsheet that I've compiled just of some standard values that I've tested, less likely to fry your scooter and are relatively safe to use. Hopefully some people will fill in the values for the other scooters as well. Until then, here's some values for the ES2, ES4, and SNSC 1.0, which all happen to have an identical drivetrain. So I have rated them as safe MPC, powerful MPC, max MPC, and absolute max MPC. So safe MPC, as it says here, is going to give you a little bit of a power boost. It'll be noticeable, but uh, you really don't have to worry much about frying anything. It's basically just like unlocking that little bit of free power you have. Powerful MPC is going to give you a significant kick, um, but it does pose a larger risk to toasting something. Max MPC is going to give you quite the uh, boost in terms of acceleration, um, but it does pose a significant risk for frying your scooter. Um, I would uh, be cautious about using this value. And then absolute max MPC is for those people who really just like to test stuff to the absolute limit. Um, this is the uh, lowest ever reported value to work um, consistently. If you try this, you are probably going to fry your scooter. Not gonna lie. It, it's just gonna, it's just, you're gonna toast a uh, speed controller fuse while going uphill or uh, something bad's gonna happen. I would highly recommend not using this value unless you really just don't care about your scooter. Okay, so a note on external batteries. If your scooter happens to have an official external battery, so the one that's officially made by Ninebot, that battery communicates with the ESC, which is the electronic speed controller, and gives it already a little bit of a motor power constant um, like decrease as on its own. So it's already going to give you a little bit more torque. So for example, if you lowered your scooter with an official external battery to a motor power constant of 40,000, it might be equivalent to lowering it to like 35,000 as opposed to if you didn't have that official external battery. So for those who are running official external batteries on their electric scooter, I highly recommend not lowering it past 44,000. I personally have fried a speed controller at 40,000. Um, so I'd be really careful with that. If you happen to be using a custom external battery though, feel free to lower it as low as 40,000. I would say I'm personally running at 40,000, have been for like a few months and I haven't had any issues with it yet. So we're gonna go back over here to our custom firmware generator and type in our motor power constant, 44,000 in this case, just playing it safe. And then we're gonna click patch and that'll download a zip file. And then we're gonna download an app called Ninebot Scooter Flasher. This can just be downloaded on the Microsoft Store. And we're gonna open that up. Here we're going to turn on our electric scooter, put our computer really close to the scooter so we can connect over Bluetooth, select our scooter and press connect. Sometimes it doesn't connect the first time, so you might just have to try again. Then we're also gonna go into our downloads folder, open our downloaded firmware, and then find the .bin.enc file and drag that to our downloads and then connect to our scooter over here again. And then we're going to click open file and select our hacked firmware. And click flash. And this takes quite a while, so give it a bit. Maybe like 10 or so minutes. This is sped up 20 times. And there you go. Once that's done, you kind of just close out of the application here. And I always reboot my scooter once. I'm not sure if you have to, but I just do it. And then 
After that, you can go outside, test your scooter, ride it around, see how it feels. If you don't like it, go back to the firmware generator, tinker with some more settings, uh, download your new hacked firmware, and just repeat with the Ninebot Flasher. There's also an app for Android. I don't believe there's any solution for Mac yet. You might be able to um, boot into Windows and try doing it that way. Never tried it though. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and let us know what you think in the comments below and any other scooter hacking videos you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.